let's get this. Uh, where's the start, start presentation? presentation. All right. Yeah, drive the slides. All right. So um, I'm uh, Oliver Seldman. I'm a freelance web developer. I also work with uh, Exaltation of Larks as a trainer. And I've uh, been working with Drupal for about four or five years now. Um, I found it when a client asked me to, uh, to build a, a custom content management system in two weeks for an emergency project. Uh, I, I was busy working with uh, Zen Framework, building a completely custom web app for them. And they were like, put that aside. We need the site up. Uh, build us a content management system. And I was like, that's not possible. And uh, I found Drupal and uh, basically have never looked back. I pretty much use it with all my clients now. In fact, I haven't been doing any um, non-Drupal work for a couple of years now. And, um, and it's been really good to me. And so we're trying to figure out some ways to share some of this knowledge, get you guys diving in, helping out a little bit, and uh, understanding how to, uh, how to take this and, and make something for yourself with it as well. Hey, I'm, I'm Kevin Kalan, co-presenting. Uh, I run Wiz1 Solutions, and um, I'm a freelance developer in Drupal. I got into it about four years ago through some volunteer work that I was doing regularly. They were like, we're going to use Drupal, and I'm like, okay. And then I got, I got a book on Drupal 5, Pro Drupal Development, pretty good series, and uh, learned it. Yeah, some, so I, buy this I, learned it I, I, learned, I learned it somehow, you know, you can't really remember how you learned it, you just know it. And uh, yeah, then I just learned by doing from then. So that's, I pretty much just work with Drupal. Um, yeah. Did you study like development or computer science? Well, I've been, I've been, I've got my first programming book when I was 11. So I had some time. Taught myself PHP and computer science independent study <laughs> in high school. And yeah, kind of taken it from there. I've been freelancing full time since 2009. So about two years. Business is good. <laughs> I, the reason I asked is because I'm, I'm also a completely self-taught developer. Um, I uh, started out like in the design world and started doing web development oh. and actually taught myself PHP and MySQL and so I, I, and it's all, all this stuff I learned just by poking around and reading books and stuff so hopefully that can inspire you guys to dive in and feel like you can Learn it for yourself. Oh yeah, I do have a bachelor in computer information systems, ah, but I okay. but I, 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 I always forget about that. <laughs> <laughs> you can see how much I value it. I didn't even remember to mention it. <laughs> um, so I would just to get started here. We like there's there's a, a little uh, joke here. Implementation of hook presentation. Um, that obviously hook presentation isn't a real hook, um, but but it gives you some clue as to some of the some of the ways that we when we when we're using hooks we kind of comment out or not comment out but comment at the top of the function that we're creating, um, indicating which hook we're calling so that as we're going through our code later, adapting it or working on it again. Um, we, we can kind of keep track of which are the hooks, the actual hooks we're working with, even if we've named it something else for ourselves. Um, so, uh, why hooks? Um, so, yeah, fine. Yeah. So, <laughs> Drupal uses um, this, this hook system to allow modules to, to customize um, its behavior. So, Drupal does a, a bunch of stuff out of the box, and provides this framework that we call hooks of, uh, to allow other things to come in and ask it to do stuff all along its various processes. Um, so as Drupal is doing its stuff, um, it goes through and asks or looks in each of the modules uh, to see if, um, if they're asking it for anything. And, um, and the, the, as we start defining the, um, which hooks we're talking about, you'll see that for each of these pieces of the process, um, there, there's a specific hook for it um, with a bunch of functionality that, that we can, um, well, hook into and, uh, and tell Drupal to do something slightly different or enhanced or whatever. Um, uh, let's see what else. Yeah, so it's, so it's really, really easy. You know, actually, most of the time, you don't have to write too much um, if you just look at, a, like, a, a, a go to that API page for that hook. You can see a quick example of it. And, and I mean, oftentimes you just alter a, 
a line or a variable or something, and, and that's your custom hook. And uh, so, I mean, it's really easy. Really, it's just a, a simple function, um, and, and it doesn't really get more complicated than that. And in fact, um, as, as you see here, um, Drupal is already using its own hooks. Its own core modules provide hooks, um, make hooks available, and, and other core modules take advantage of them. So this is all going on behind the scenes already um, on top of what's happening in the contributed module space. Um, and, and so like not only is core doing this, but just about every other module is using some kind of hook uh, to do something. Um, so before we move into just some more, some more details, so I asked for a show of hands, who understood hooks? Did, they, did, any, did that help anybody? Does anybody feel like they understand it more? Not really. Okay. So one person, two people. Okay, so, so the, the, when we did this last time... How, how, was the, how was the spread on who understood and who's used? It was about the same, actually. <laughs> actually, there were fewer of people who understood it than, than last time. Um, but so, so when, this, when, this, when we gave this talk last time, the, the same response, basically, like, okay, so I went through, I explained kind of what it is, and people still kind of were, like, raising hands, so I still don't get it. So who's we, used a hook? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Who understands a hook? <laughs> Silence, crickets chirping. <laughs> uh, um, but so somebody had 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 been to um, had been to Drupal DrupalCon. Uh, well, the Chicago. last one, yeah, Chicago. And it, we the, the presentation was actually about a week or two after Chicago, and had come back. We had gone to a, a, a coding uh, session where the guy was talking about hooks. It was it was Ezra G, mm. and um, he had used an analogy. And we, through a little bit of telephone, we got a version of it that wasn't quite what he had used. But it turns out it would it actually it, works it worked really well. And so the, so the analogy is um, of of it's going to the kitchen. So like if we're 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 a module, and uh, Drupal says, uh, "Hey, I'm going to the kitchen." Uh, you, you want me to pick something up for you on the way? Or I'm going to go, when I get in the kitchen, I'm going to go open the fridge. You want anything from the fridge? And then, actually, you know, when I'm coming back, I'm going to be passing through the living room. You want me to grab anything on the way back? And, and it's provi so Drupal's providing this, the, all of these opportunities for us to ask it to do something or change what it's doing as it's going through it, its regular processes and the processes of other modules. Modules themselves can provide hooks to you as well. So as all of these things are happening, um, basically Drupal keeps asking our module, do you want to do something here, do you want to do something here? And as long as we define a, a hook that, that refers to one of those parts of the process, we can just jump right in, ask it to go pick us up a beer on the way back, or whatever it is that, uh, that we need. Or to get a get a red can of beer instead of a green one. Yeah, we, I was gonna go get uh, yeah I was gonna go get the Miller Lite. Can you get me a Bud instead or something like that? <laughs> I, I can tell I don't really drink beer. But. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so um, so what are hooks? Um, well, hooks are really just functions. They're really I mean at, at its at its very basic level, there it's just a simple function. And so all, all we do when when we use one is just act, you know just define the function. Um, and, and, and most of the time, we're actually just copying and pasting what, what was available in some sample code and just making a couple of little tweaks. And one of, some of the reasons for, for the copy and pasting element is, is in here, where, where it defines all of the various arguments uh, that, it's, that it's going to be um, uh, uh, looking for. And, and when, as we define our function, we want to make sure we define it exactly as it's expected. Um, so we don't actually use the word hook when we're using a hook. Um, the hook is just the, 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 I guess, the definition of the function. And, and as I mentioned in the presentation, we say, and this, so if, in this case, we're going to implement the, the hook user. Uh, we, we, know, we indicate that we're going to implement hook user. And in, in our case, we will define the, the, what, what used to be the hook part of it with the name of, the module, of, a, of our custom module. Um, so, so in this case, we're saying this is an implementation, implementation of hook user, and, and my module called your module is going, to be, is going to be using it. I saw a question. Uh, yeah, very quick question. So uh, I see that you, made, uh, you altered the name of the function. What if you, uh, let's say, uh, add after user underscore one? So it would be your module underscore user underscore one. 
is your hooks built on a function, or uh, there's a certain way to, there's a conventional way to uh, rename your hooks. Um, so you, you actually wouldn't really rename the, the function name in that scenario. You would leave the hook at, at, as it basically your module and then the hook name. And then if you want to do something with user one in this case, you'd actually do something in the, in the code of the function saying, you know, if user one something or, or here, you know, like we're talking about an insert, if you're inserting a user or something like that. Uh, I was just referring to the actual naming uh, convention for the hook. So uh, any, basically everything to the right of the underscore cannot be, that, that area has to be left alone. If you want to make any names for it, it would have to be on the left side of the underscore, right? Yeah, that's right. If you wanted to call it user underscore one, you would have to define that hook, probably within the real hook user, and then you could call hook user one. It would be kind of pointless to do that. But, you know, yeah, these are, because what Drupal does is that it, it's, it's looking for that specific text for user when it, when it, invokes, you know, when it calls all the all the hook functions, it says user, and then it, it cobbles it together, module name, underscore, thing I said, in this case user, and it's, it's, it's hard-coded to that degree, but the name of the module is different for each one. So yeah, that's a, that's a function signature, if you like. Yeah, it's, uh, there's kind of like, yeah, it's like I'm, 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 the magic happens in the naming convention, because in this case, so when Drupal's going through looking for modules, it's looking for something underscore user when it's going through its user stuff. Um, so if you change it to something underscore user or something else, it's not good. I mean, part of it is the naming convention, and that's why it's finding the hooks as it's going through its stuff. Someone um, else had a question? Well, related to that. Uh, uh, back here first. So the parameters are also fixed for the, for the function. But I see that in this case, for example, you have uh, put a default value. Can you put default values? So uh, there? this default value here under category, you mean? Can you have made the category null? Yeah, so th this is actually part of how hook user is defined by default. Okay. So and we can, just copy and paste it. You can change, it. Change, you can cha if it, if it has a default value, you can change it. It's not, it's just going to change the default value. It just, it just works, in that sense, it works like a normal PHP function. Yeah, but the rest you need because, you know, it's going to pass those arguments to your function. So if you don't have it, you'll get a PHP error. There was another yeah, one. I think related to both of those, um, does the, the name on the left, does that have to be the name of your module? Okay. Yep. And then on the, on the parameters, um, I thought I read that sometimes you don't have to have all the parameters in some hooks, or do you always need all the parameters? Um, so like on this one, for example, or a really good one, if I can just, which browser do you use? Uh, you want to open a different one for the purpose? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. So he'll, he'll just bring up something in a second. A really good example is hook node API. So this is where you can do things with your, with your pages and your nodes when they're being displayed. Like hook user that was up there, it had that op thing. So for different sorts of operations in the, in the process of dealing with a node, um, it, it can do different things. Uh, sometimes the parameters are different depending on which thing you're doing in Drupal 6. Uh, this is not so much the case in Drupal 7 where they've split out those different operations into their own hooks, but in Drupal 6, like, um, if you're doing operation equals view, you need, you know, you need the node, the op, and then there's like this ambiguous A3 and A4 thing. And then when you scroll down in the, uh, in, in, the, in the description, it says like, okay, A3, for view, it passes this. For validate, it passes this. For the other ones, you, you don't really need it. It's not, as far as I know, it's not going to use it. Maybe it passes null. You, I would have it there anyway, just to be sure. But strictly speaking, it's, it's not used for anything in that case. So if you just, like if you were just to copy from underscore node API over and then just put your mo replace hook with your module name and then you know put an opening brace you, you could just do that and that would that would work that's pretty much how I do it every time I mean for the ones that I don't remember but yeah all right let's uh, 
Right. So uh, just a quick, just a quick description of what was going on here. I mentioned it briefly. So this, this, um, this is a, the the user hook for for six, and I know this because it's got this op in here. And and so in this case, we're saying there are all of these different things that happen when uh, when we're we're working with users. We can be inserting, we can be updating, we can be whatever. Um, and so the way that that we work with this op in six is we would do a switch on it. And then for each of the cases that we wanted to affect, we would, you know, we would put our code, you know, have our stuff happen there. And, and so in, in seven, what ends up happening is that, that each of those hooks ends up uh, being its own, each of these ops. So it would be your module underscore user underscore insert would have its own hook just for the, the functionality. Yeah, if Phil, he could pull that an example of that. I'm sorry? Where do the hooks exist? Where do the hooks exist? Yeah. Um, they're provide the so the, the original ones are provided by the module that, that makes it available. Um, usually a core module or or even a contributed module. Um, your hooks, your custom one, would reside in your own, in this case, your module would be what our module is called. So we would have a module called your module, and inside it it would be your module underscore user, your module underscore node API. So, so we have a custom module, and all of our custom hooks would live inside of that. Yeah, so here's an example of the Node API one. In, yeah, so in is, six is there an issue with the internet? Sorry about this. Um, so I was just trying to see if I could find one. So this, this, this Drupal alter thing, for, an exa for example, this is a hook being called. So it, it'll call, you'll, you'll either see module invoke, module invoke all, or Drupal alter, and this means that it's calling, it's calling, um, I guess, node view alter, or just node view, that hook. Yeah, in this case, that one, that's how hook node view is actually called in Drupal's node modules node view function. So it actually calls this, and then all the modules that have module name node view, it, it sort of pulls in their changes, and then changes what's there. So this is, this, is a, this is actually where the hook is, if you like. That, that's that's how, it, how that works. So, all right, next. So yeah, so we have actually mentioned some of these as, as we've just been kind of going over stuff, but, but you'll see this is just a basic, uh, uh, just to talk about some of the, the terminology that we use. So, so, so one of the things we actually already talked about, I think I already talked about exposing a hook. So that's when, an, well, that's when a module um, creates or makes its own hook available to, for you to come and do something. Um, Drupal Core obviously does this, but, but if, if we can create our own hook that other modules can use, and in that case we'd be exposing a hook. Um, the, the next one is uh, hooks firing, um, and that, that's kind of the process I was talking about. As Drupal goes and it's saying, I'm doing something with a user, and it goes through looking for other hook users to do something, each time it finds one, that hook fires. That's a way that, it, that we refer to it as the hook running, basically, your, your custom hook running. That's a hook firing. Just to add that. Please continue. Um, so, I mean, we, we, we also, uh, I mean, invoking a hook is basically the, we already kind of talked about it, when, when, I, when I do an implementation of, we're, we're, we're just in, invoking that hook, we're, we're using it. Um, the, we, we actually kind of t just touched on the, the operations part of it. Um, I actually mentioned some of this stuff here, where, where in D6, each of, a lot of these hooks um, have a whole series of operations that, that actually, and sometimes, can completely change what type of arguments the, the hook is looking for. It, it can be kind of crazy. Um, it can look for different type of parameters. It can look for arrays instead of strings. And so um, when that's happening, we're, we're actually having to switch on each of those operations. And then in seven, uh, um, I don't know if it, they got everyone, but a lot of the a lot of the important ones, and probably most of them, have have, have been broken out and and turned into individual hooks. So that so that yeah, here's a it's a good example. Instead of being something with switching within hook node API, there's just the one hook for when you're viewing a node. Um, so and 
oh, this PHP pass by reference stuff actually saw there's some other stuff on a, on a f future slide. Did you want to talk about something now about how it, the pass by reference, or there's actually a description of it on one of the next slides? But. In one of these, it doesn't seem to be this one, the comment explains it, but basically Drupal 7 uses PHP 5, and the reason that on, for example, on um, hook node API, you see this ampersand node. This is because if it was Dru if it was PHP four, you would need that ampersand for it to know that it should pass by reference. If you're a programmer, you know what I mean. If not, don't worry. Do, well, does, um, does anybody know what what pass by reference means? Okay, that's about half of you. Does anybody really want to know? Want us to explain it real quick? The the explanation that went over well when I did this last time is pass by reference means if I change it in the function, it stays changed. The other one means it doesn't stay changed. It only changes in the one instance. In that inside the function, then once you go back up to wherever it was called, it doesn't stays the same. So, so obviously, in the case of a node, if you want to affect something per permanently, affect something that's going on with the node, you you want to change. You actually want to change the original, not just the copy. It should be yeah. It should be by reference. And what happens is that all all objects, not arrays, objects are by reference in PHP five by default. So you don't need to put the ampersand. And since Drupal 7 already knows, hey, I'm on PHP 5, they, they were able to take that out. If it's a raise, like, like, um, like in this other one we'll look at called form alter, you still need to put the ampersand. So those are passing by reference even though we don't have the ampersand? Right. That is because correct. in this case, no and, is an object. And even in Drupal 6, if you're running PHP 5, it would be the same. It, know, it would work. Is that what those warnings come from sometimes in old modules? That, that can, as far as I know, that can be one of the things. <laughs> yeah, just just um, it just don't use, yeah. Just tell your module maintainers to update their modules. We won't get into that. <laughs> there was another question. If you're running PHP five, all the parameters that are getting using the hook alter points, the functions, they were all passed by reference. No, no. Um, this is a PHP um aspect. So objects in PHP, whether in Drupal or any other platform are passed by reference when you have them as a when you're passing an object as an argument to a function and you have a parameter yeah. that is that is an object it's passed by reference so if you change it it'll get it'll stay changed but in if that if one of those if one of those arguments is a string then it, it's just a string it's just a string it, it's well, only in the case where it's an object right. maybe let's just take this one when we get to the Q&A uh, just, just Well, Drupal is built. Drupal is built on PHP. Yes. Yeah. P, the, it's a PHP five feature. Yep. It's not Drupal. Thank you. No problem. All right. So well, yeah, we'll we'll have we'll have some Q and A time. So don't worry. So 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 he, we've been talking about just kind of the overall concept, what it is. Let's understand like how it works. But le, le, so here are some of the things that we can actually do, like some concrete things we can do with a hook. We can create a new form to do whatever we want. It can be a multi-step form. It can have as many fields in it as we want. We can, can, we can use the form API to, to uh, add validation to this. We can, we, can, we can do all kinds of things, creating new ones and, in fact, modifying existing ones. This is probably what I use hooks for the most. Most of my custom modules for clients is taking something that Drupal is already doing, a form that it's already doing, going in, changing a little thing about it, making something by default, turning something to required, uh, automatically pre-populating a field with one other thing, uh, hiding stuff. All of these little tiny tweaks um, happen with, through a hook, and, and, and you, know, you can just have a little one-liner, totally changes what, what Drupal shows in a specific form. Another thing is you can use this, I mean, we've already touched on this, you can modify nodes, users, pages, I mean, the list goes on. All of, anything that's an entity, anything that's, I mean, you can, you can go in there rules. and, I'm sorry? Rules. You can alter rule definitions. Yeah. I, in fact, I gave rules. a presentation on how to write little custom rule stuff. Yeah, some, I mean, some hooks even alter stuff that might have been done by other hooks. So there can be like two levels of hooks sometimes, which is interesting. And yeah, and as I mentioned, modules provide their own hooks. So so in this list can just keep going for every module that starts providing its own hooks to something. Um, another thing that you can use a, a hook for is to provide a block to create a block from code. You want to 
you want to do something programmatically and have that be what's in your little block that you can move around and put in a region. You can define a block, define what shows up in it in code, and that, that's on your blocks page, and you can put it on the top, the left side bar, whatever you want. You can, another thing that I often use hooks for is to provide new permissions. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, you go to the permissions page, and what you, what you want there is, is um, it, it maybe not, doesn't quite um, give you the granularity of control of permissions that you want. Or let's say I'm, pr I'm providing my own module, and I want uh, so a whole s slew of functionality that I'm providing, and I want to provide a permission on the permissions page for people who can access that functionality. So that, that's another, another great way to, to use a hook. Um, we can use hooks to, uh, to create uh, new database tables. We can define the schema of the table. We can insert stuff into the table. Uh, in fact, you know, if you're building a, a custom module that stores custom data, you're going to use a hook to build your, your custom tables. For yeah, that. every module that installs a table, it has uh, this thing called hook install. When you turn it on, it gets installed, it, it'll create the table and all that. In Drupal 7, if you also have hook schema, it does it by default. It's just like, hey, there's a schema, create. And, and you know, you, so you can also put it in this thing called hook update. So when people run update.php, you've run that before? Yep, that's why you have to run it. There might be hooks. And then, you know, it'll, it, might, it could add new columns, add new tables, whatever. Modify some tables that were there. Yeah, modify stuff that was it there. It messes up what you're trying to do. You probably experienced that once or twice. I know I have. Um, uh, some other stuff, a couple more things that you can do. You can, you can manipulate menus. Or have, can, or have menus in the first place. Yeah, you can add menus, create them, create paths, uh, modify paths. Um, and then, you know, we mentioned it before, but you can, you can also expose your own hooks. There's a very simple process for exposing your own hooks to other developers or to other modules um, that, that maybe allow them to jump into your process and, and make some tweaks to it, uh, stuff that you might know somebody would want to change later or could want to change later. You provide this functionality rather than them coming in and having to tweak your module or to override stuff on the theme layer, you can maybe just provide a hook to give them control of that. Yeah, it's really flexible. One really cool thing with menus too is that you can replace menus. Like you can take a menu and tell it to go to your module instead of the one that it was originally going to. So if you have something you need to change a lot, you can just, you know, copy, copy its function, call it, change it to your module, and, you know, do, do what you need to do, re-implement it. So quite, quite, uh, quite good. We already went over this, so I'm just going to skip this slide. Yeah, yeah, we pretty much covered this one. We covered that, and then um, we get into our examples. Yeah, so, so I, I do just want to quickly just point out a couple of these things here. Um, we talked about it, there, the, the Drupal API reference um, at api.drupal.org, um, you know, this is, the, this is the specific page for hook 6 and hook 7, uh, for hooks for 6 and hook 7, but you can get to them just from the main api.drupal.org page, and in fact, most of the time I don't go specifically to this page, I go into the search box and actually type the hook I'm looking for, or even type something about the hook, like user, and just see what comes up and find what I'm looking for. Um, there's there's an awesome uh, an, an awesome uh, blog post that Angie Byron Webchick wrote um, when she was at Lullabot about uh, it's called <laughs> Drupal Exposed. But she with with um, cr with using uh, two hooks, she ha creates um, highlights um, all of the theme functions and all of the bootstrapping functions that happen. Basically, she just says if you're running a hook, highlight it, like print it out. And so if you follow her example of a simple hook, you can go load up a page and see every hook that fired to make that page load or every template file that loaded to make that page work. Wow. And it's, it's a really awesome article. And then there, there, we, I just want to give a shout out to Chris Shattuck of buildamodule.com. He's got a really awesome site with lots of fantastic hundreds of hours, I think, of, of, uh, of videos on Drupal development, theme development, um, there, he's got, uh, I think Kevin is on, on demand, going to pull out a copy of it here. Um, he, 
DVDs and um, also just that, you know, that you can get access to the website on a monthly basis and stuff. Very great resource. And he definitely has a section where he talks about hooks and, uh, well, he's got a whole section on module development that's like, you know, like 50 videos or something. So um, this yeah, would this be... this video is free, right? This one is free and it's the intro part, but then there's like all of the custom development information is the paid stuff. Yeah, I know, I know like a developer who was using this and he just told me yesterday... Good stuff. I've been watching this like two hours every evening, learning so much. And he told me that they have a new feature where it'll underline the word. It has like the text next to the video and it underlines the word that's being said as it goes along. So that sounds pretty cool. Oh, yeah. I seen that. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it reads it with underlines as it goes. So um, just uh, per, uh, what was that? Terminal? Yeah. So yeah, you just give us perhaps take notes or process what we've said so far. We're just going to get into examples. Just need a moment. What would happen? So Oliver will answer some questions while I set this up. I should. I should. I should. It's just SSH, right? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. So since you already told that it's still some fires, what responsibility do you have? I'm not sure if you do a big loop, that's going to take time. Um, it, that's a difficult question to answer because um, sometimes you know you do have to do a lot to get to get what you need done. And it's not just as simple as a one-liner to make it happen. And um, you know then you have to you have to go through and um, do some you know performance testing if you're doing a lot of crazy stuff in there. I mean there 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 actually been a couple of uh, back developed like back in performance sessions um, earlier uh, that may have talked about some of this stuff, but, you know, you, you, you can go in and, you know, if you find that something that you've done by calling multiple hooks is creating a huge, you know, like lots of database queries and slowing stuff down, maybe you, in your hook, you need to literally just call that stuff directly from the, just the one thing you need from the database manually, don't try and use some other stuff. Uh, you know, sometimes um, in order to to streamline stuff, you just gotta go. You just gotta go and and play with it and 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 test it and see how it works. And it is a little bit hard to answer. I mean, most of the time there there really isn't. I mean, obviously, as you know, the more code you add, the more modules you add, the more it's loading, the more it's looking for, the more it slows things down in very small little ways. Um, but uh, but um, you know, with that, with each each case of of something like that would have to be examined on a case by case basis, kind of, to see if there is a bottleneck and where the bottleneck is. And, uh, usually, though, it's it's not something that I encounter. I mean, obviously, the more the more crazy you're trying to do something, the, the more of a chance that something like that could happen. But not something I, I I really worry about on my day to day kind of tweaking things. Did anybody else have another question while Kevin was getting logged in? You mainly talk about uh, modules, but these hooks can also run on uh, the themes. Yes, and they're, all, they're actually uh, uh, lots of other kind of theming-oriented hooks as well. Um, mostly we were just kind of talking about the concepts and some of the basic applications. There, but, I mean, you're, you're, you're definitely right. There, there are lots of things that happen, um, on, you know, kind of on the theme layer. And then um, the theme itself becomes the, the hook. Well, they, so you would use the, te the template.php file of your theme to, to, to pre-process the, the node, for example, and add some variables to your, to your theme, or pre-process the page and alter some stuff. I mean, that, those are a couple of examples of, of, uh, of theme hooks. Uh, but we, we were actually weren't going to specifically get into those. Yeah. Uh, should we touch a little bit on the parameters that are being passed in the user hook, which is uh, prop edit? Um, on the on like from that that's the specific hook user for Drupal six. Uh, yeah. Um, so it's actually all defined on the API the page that, that we pulled up uh, for each of the each of the ops and what uh, each of the those what it was expecting. Um, were, were, there was like a little line about what it did and what it was for and what you should use it for. Um, also, with you know off the top of my head, I I don't even remember. 
I often, I mean, I, I rely extremely heavily on api.drupal.org for all of that stuff. There's no way I can remember all of the parameters that a, a random, or I mean, obviously, hook user isn't a, isn't a random one. It's a pretty common one, but I just don't, I mean, I'm always, every time I have this exact question, I go to the api.drupal.org to find that out. And uh, so basically, every time I use uh, well, it, yeah, and, and it's actually not quite passed in the sense that it's receiving them. So if you, if you want to do something with the user stuff, that's what it's sending you. So if you want to touch any of those things, you want to alter them, you want to use it for something, you got you got you got to have your function um, expect the same stuff that Drupal's giving. Uh, yeah, theoretically you could if you were going to uh, do something, I mean, call it some other way too. And mo mostly what, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm just defining the hook exactly as it is on api.drupal.org. And if there is other stuff I want to do, I do it within the function. So I basically use the, the hook to take what Drupal's giving it, and then whatever else I want to do, I, I do within the function. So if you wanted to do other, I mean, I'm trying to think of a scenario where you'd want to use a standard hook, but also pass it other parameters that, that you know, you'd have to, you'd have to do some additional custom stuff to kind of make that happen. I can give you a smaller example. Um, actually, can, I, there was someone else here. Can we, can we just take another question and we can, I think Kevin's going to be ready in a minute too. So. Yeah, I'm almost ready. Um, I like to work offline a lot, like, and then push my stuff back with Git. Uh -huh. But uh, API, or Drupal.org, API site is really imperative. Um, no, so so there, there's the Lullabot one. There's also DrupalContrib.org. I want to say. Yeah, there's a there should be a module called API. I think if you install it on your site, it should it should do that. And it should are, it reads all the PHP doc, and it should. I, I'm not exactly sure. I'm not sure of step two, but <laughs> API module, PHP doc, eh, and API site. Are there any other um, I believe there are some uh, some attempts. I, I remember seeing like a, like, a, like a, just a doc, like a PDF version of the documentation that you could just download. I, I, off the top of my head, I don't remember where or how I came across it. Oh, okay. For Drupal? I didn't know about that. Wow. I'm not sure how great it is, but I've seen it. Okay. I've used it myself. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. I didn't know that either. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I do, um, yeah, I guess I could see that. I mean, even though I do code locally primarily, I am still connected to the yeah, internet, but if that's not, yeah, in your case. Yeah. Uh, if I use a hook, like, where would I put my file? Like, can you show me a directory of where to put those files? Uh, yeah, we could do that. Um, yeah, I, just, I can just, just one second, I'm almost, almost there. I can kind of describe it. So, do you know about what the file structure of, of a Drupal site looks like? Okay, so in sites, uh -huh. all modules, um, you you would put your custom module in there. Okay. Um, you would create a module folder, an info file for it, and then whatever. Yep, yeah. So there are also some like kind of best practices around that that have kind of evolved as people, you know, as developers are 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 um, you know dealing with this on a regular basis. And that's kind of so within that sites all modules folder, um, people now tend to create like a core and contrib folder, and then I mean not core, I'm sorry, a contrib and a custom folder. And so you would maybe put all of your your contrib stuff in contrib and all of your your few custom modules in custom, or sometimes people will just put all of the main, all of the downloaded modules in modules, and then create one folder called custom, and just put their custom stuff in there. Um, but yeah, that's where it would be. All right. So and we're up. The uh, the the five minute the five minute version. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so, so uh, mm, I don't really. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, further questions will probably have to be after class. Cause just so we can show this demo, and maybe we'll have time for one more. Um, so I got Drupal 6 and Drupal 7 kind of lab sites set up, uh, and 
what I've done is just implemented a couple hooks. So let's look at the code that I've got going here. And you can, as you might have seen in the little session blurb, you can actually get this code. You know, you can get this code from a Drupal.org sandbox. So you can look at the code up close yourself. It's it's on Drupal.org. You can down you can download the presentation code, the official version. So um, it's pretty straightforward. We're not gonna we're not. How do I do that? Something like that. Is that a little better? Yeah, your colors are weird. Yeah, I'm uh, not actually didn't. I'm used to. Oh, I think I'm used to. Yeah, what happened here? Oh. Let me try to set the other color. Is this better? Yeah. Yeah, it was on the wrong color scheme because normally I have a black background in my terminal. All right, so um, we will look at form alter and at one of the Node API options today. So um, I'm just going to tell you what I did, and I won't take too much time on the code because of time constraints. So, um, and the one we want to look at is this node form one. What I've done is I've added a checkbox that lets you conquer the node. So it's, it, just, it just changes the author of it to you when you save. That's all it does. And then to actually make that work, um, I had to add... A, this thing called, uh, basically another thing, another function that happens when you submit that form, my own, so I could get it to do some extra stuff, uh, and all it does is just set some stuff. So the first one was, was, was actually using um, a, a Drupal hook. Yeah, hook, was hook form alter. Hook form alter, and he's, so he's altering a form. And then here on the submit, he, he's actually telling when, when you submit to actually call this other custom one that he just wrote on separate function. That is, that is correct. So, and then finally, I'm using the, this pre-save up, which is like just before the node is saved, you can change some stuff that's going to be saved to just essentially deal with if that box got checked. And this is kind of a roundabout way to do that, but I'm not going to say any more about that. It's a, it's a, it's a demo. <laughs> and then I just got a view that tells the current state of conquering of the node whether you own it or whether you don't. So, um, let's go look at the site. It's the, it's the same code in Drupal 6 and Drupal 7, so you could look at them side by side, for example, when, on your own time and see the differences. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Uh, let's go, you gotta go into a particular node. Perhaps I don't have it turned on. Let's check that. What did you say? Where? I probably globalized it. Yeah, I think there was a place where it said. He, he oh, okay. See, for some reason, I had a some reason I had disabled it. Perhaps after some uh, problems. <laughs> so just enabling that, and then we'll see stuff happen. Either that, or I'll be reminded why I disabled it. I'm hoping for one of those outcomes. <laughs> and if that happens, I'll go to Drupal 7. <laughs> okay, so here we go. You have already conquered this node. That little view thing that you may have seen flash by while I was explaining the code. Um, it creates this little message up here. The main thing, that checkbox, you've got to actually go into the edit mode. And right at the top, conquer this. Um, to, to actually see this work, I need to change it to someone else first. So let's change it to this convenient user that I created. Save it. And then first thing you'll notice is that this little box up here, suddenly the message changed and it says, you know, now I, I haven't conquered it. So we go, now we go back, now we can check this box can save it. And then this is where it's calling that submit function that I defined. Uh, and, and then when, just before the node saves, the node module calls hook, hook node API with the op being pre-save. 
and the code I wrote gets put in there. And the end result is that it goes back to me being the owner of this node. So this is hooks in action. Not nothing super complex, but you get an idea of you know change, displaying a message, changing something that happens that wouldn't normally happen. That you can do. Just let me um, just show this real quick in Drupal seven too. It seems like I. that I've enjoyed disabling this module as of late. I don't know why that is. While it's loading, anyone use Drush? Yeah, maybe we could get that one question while, oh, yeah. while yeah, this loads. Like you, said, you added a checkbox and loaded it to your node, to your node entry uh, form. Yes. Using hook uh, form alter. Using hook form alter. Now, this would generally be something you use in, in hooks, but normally a lot of other people do with CCK, correct? Um, this with CCK, you more add fields to the to the like to the front end. Um, for that, you could use CCK for that when you're when you're configuring it. This is an example. Right, you you would you would you would normally yeah you yeah. you would normally use CCK for that kind of thing. But you would still need a way for for your your thing to happen when that box was checked. So I could have added it with CCK, and then I could have said. If node field underscore awesome underscore checkbox zero value is is true, then do that thing. Okay. So just the way I added it is different. Okay, and then you can I mean you you already you already know how this goes. So right. you can just see that it is working on Drupal seven. So um, one more question. So uh, if, so in Drupal six you're using hook node API, and in Drupal seven are you using like hook node pre save? Why don't we have a look at the Drupal 7 code real quick? I'm using I am using hook node pre save. That that's right. That's that's the so long nice that's the long and short long and short of it. <laughs> so that's that's an example of what you were talking about where in six they're using node API and they sort of instead of using a comp for all those, you're mm -hmm. it out and using a specific pre save node view. Exactly, yep. Yeah, so you can see on his hook node view. So is that like a Partially for that, because obviously to run a switch every time you need to do something can be expensive. But but also I'm I'm guessing there's a, there's half half performance, half sanity. Yeah, yeah. I think it's developer experience as well. It's a little it's a little nicer just to have to do one thing instead of having to remember this crazy thing. So that's one of the developer improvements. Other things have gotten harder. But one of my questions: How to, to what degree can you use this in order to replace some of the stuff? That's too broad of a question to <laughs> to answer. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so I'm trying to reduce as much uh, stuff from loading additional modules to putting things into. Sort of you um, modules. you can you can use this to replace a lot of things that you might. And this is very bad. You might be putting PHP code into those PHP code fields. You, you could use this to replace some of that. Like computed field, you might be able to do stuff with this instead. Um, a, lot of, a lot of contributed modules have hooks that let you, you know, hook in properly, like views, instead of hacking it. So this, that's a good way. That's a good stop using PHP code fields. That's a good way to do it with hooks. Yeah, also, I mean, like, you can, I mean, you generally look at CCK or the field API in 7 as, as a way of adding, you know, fields to a content type of a certain type. Um, if you want to, like, have custom functionality or, uh, you know, editing, having some, like, different types of settings on, on, on that content type or, or adding um, more unique widgets or, I mean, like, there, there are a lot of things that you'd want to do that, Completely custom, and I, I look at CCK as more of, a, or, or the field API as more of a way of, uh, you know, just adding a different type of a field, a text field, uh, you know. But in this case, maybe because it was a, 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 just an example, the checkbox one might not have been, you know, in your use case, might not have been a great example. Okay. All right. Thanks for coming. Thanks for